Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, we have this defense team here. It's not the most amazing defense team, but it's pretty decent, I'd say. It can definitely get some wins against people. There are no rallies or anything, just some Wings of Mercy standard shenanigans. AoE. So... The moral of the story here is we're just going to go hyper aggressive and I don't know what turn we're going to go on yet um, but the idea is we got a one round KO Seliv and because he has so much attack we can get Tharja into vantage range and theoretically um, we can also start set. The thing about, we can't really bother setting up Miracle because there's they're going to have their AoE specials up turn 1, so they're just going to be at 1 HP anyways, so it doesn't really matter in that respect. Um, but the big threat here is, of course, Kron with the Change Fate. So the play for us is probably going to be, we're going to take some time to test this Bolt Trap. Um, probably don't want Tharja to do it. But we we might have like Veronica do it. That that kind of burns turns though. I don't know if I like that. So because technically, so basically we take out Celif, and because Deirdre is out of range of the healing tower, she's going to be at two HP. <laughs> so uh, with Divine Naga. She'll have 43 res bulk, and uh, which means we, we kind of have a problem with Tharja here because <laughs> she only has 41 attack without field buffs, so that means we gotta have Fiorm in range, which is important to note. Uh, so, like something like taking out, it's so like say after we test this bolt trap, then we can go ahead and use Tharja to break the panic manner. Dance, then pick up the kill on Seliv, and then repo out with few arm, and we've done our job. So once we're, we're we should be in vantage range, I'd be surprised if we weren't. Um, so then we can pick up the kill on Deirdre, unless I did a computation wrong, because few arms going to nom up all the debuffs. There's no way Tharja can get hit by any of them. I also don't understand why there's chill, why. Um, never mind. Yeah, chill attack makes sense, I guess. It's a little, a little weird, but, um, so that's fine. We'll pick up the kill on Deirdre. Uh, Lysithia, she only, at best, she has 64 res bulk, thanks to Deirdre. So, but if we max buff Tharja, then, um, we'll have, like, 72 attack with Fiorm. So that's a one-shot. And then Azura... I mean, worst case scenario, she's proccing Book of Shadows, so we get minus four attack, but we're max buffed, so <laughs> that's an easy one shot on Azura. And then all we have left is Ninian and Krom. So the big problem here is, of course, well, Krom. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's going to be kind of tricky. Depending on how we set up our units, I'm pretty sure Ninian's going to go this way. So the idea is we have to make sure that Krom does not use the change fate. And it's comparable to like Future Vision or all those kind of shenanigans. It's just like using swap or reposition. And so all we have to do is make sure that when Ninian, if Krom were to use it, that the place Ninian ends up on is no better better. Um, then the, her current location in terms of the enemies that are in range to attack her if that made any sense So if we suppose Ninian went down here if we have Tharja here and Fiorm here and Azura and everyone else camped over here He won't use to change fate and if she goes here uh, same deal because it's just Fiorm and Tharja. No one else should be in range as long as we put Veronica way far in the back. So that's the plan, but I don't know how we're going to uh, 
deal with these guys yet without accidentally murdering them and not picking up the ether structures, but we'll worry about that when we get there. Uh, in the meantime, we can go ahead and see how we want to approach this bolt trap. We might take a lot of turns for this, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, I think we are just going to go ahead and go for a turn two bolt trap test play. So we're going to do this, into this, into this, into this. And then we're going to want... Uh, wait a second. Yeah, that's fine. Then we can break Bright Shrine as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do uh, this, I believe. This seems fine. Because again, we're gonna have a uh, Darger break it. Uh, okay, so at this point, now we can test the Bolt Trap. I'm gonna be real with you, I'm kind of expecting this one to be real, just because that's where the Panic Manor is, so... That's why we're going to keep our drone company out of range, because otherwise then we have to burn a Veronica heal. Which honestly might be a good idea, because then that gets up wind fireball, but we're not thinking that far ahead. And indeed it's real. That's 30 damage. And now we have Altina advantage range, which is kind of whatever. It's not going to affect the outcome of things much. So at this point, now we got to set up shenanigans. Yes. So let's see, Fjorm's not buffed at all. Darja has a total of 102, and Fjorm has a total of 103, so <laughs> we don't even need to have have her around. So we could have Fjorm here, Tharja here, and then just uh, move Veronica out if we want to. It doesn't really matter when we move out Veronica. Might as well do it now than later. So then we can break the Panic Manor, dance, take out Selif, because we don't die in one hit to him. It's pretty close, but uh, not quite enough. He doesn't have quite enough. And then from there, Fjorm can just repel. So that's the plan, at least. We'll see what actually happens. <laughs> Alright. Here's the healing tower. Of course, we could have done a computation wrong as well. Um, so that would not be great. Wait. Oh wait, yeah, there's the bolt trap. I was like, wait, why'd they get damaged twice? <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm tripping. Um, Alright. And of course, if Ninian attacks first for some reason, <laughs> uh, I don't know why she would attack Darja. I mean, no, I would because she's going, well, 31 attack. <laughs> uh, 37. No, she could conceivably attack Darja. No, she can't. There's no one to wings and mercy off of. Okay, never mind. Scratch that. So, let's see if our play works out as intended. Um, so I guess it's kind of moderately relevant how we place our units, because we do want to buff in some decent way. So I'm thinking we have Altina in the corner here. Let's do this immediately. And uh, do this. Again, there's no rallies, so we don't have to worry about that. Already in vantage range, and the only hardy bearing is on Krom. He can't get to us. Unless, of course, he uses to change fate. So, what we don't want to do here is move Veronica up one space, because then, from here, or where, or like here, for example, Ninian goes here, Veronica's in range to attack Ninian, but if, hypothetically, Krom were to use to change fate, then Ninian gets back here, and Veronica can no longer attack her. So, from this location, two units can attack her. But same thing with this place but um, in this location, only one unit can attack her. So Krom would use to change fate. Or so I think, we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking we might want to pivot this way. I, I don't know. Would it be more adv advantageous to have it here to smite this way? No, I don't think so. Eh, it might. Well, well, well. 
Is there any reason we would want to have... I don't think there's any advantages other than maybe if you want to move Darja this way? Oh, Lever... Uh, yeah... Mm, yeah, we'll leave her in place. We'll see if we goof somewhere. I could see it happening. All right, there's the AOE special, and of course we kill there. And there's another AOE special, and we kill there. And we of course kill this. And Krom doesn't even go in the same direction, so... <laughs> okay. That's kind of good for us. So now... This is where having Wind Fire Bomb would have been useful. <laughs> oh boy. So at this point, we can take out uh, Ninian using Folks. I'm a bit concerned about how we grab this ether structure here. It's a little tricky. Maybe we could do a funny play where we trap Krom somehow. I could see that working. Uh, because Veronica is three movement. So let's suppose all the possible scenarios here. I think honestly he would go like... I don't know who you'd be targeting because he kind of like murders <laughs> a lot of my units here. And I'm too lazy to calculate all the damage and stuff. So I'm going to assume it's like Veronica or Tharja. Probably Tharja, I would say. So... It's a bit inconclusive, unfortunately. Orders, please. Okay, so we could have... Um... Uh, Fiorm up. She's... wouldn't get... Would she pick up the kill? Uh, 68 attack and doubling. Yes, that's a kill. And that also accelerates soul for us, which will be nice, I guess, against Krom. So, hypothetically, we might want Crown to be here. So then we want to have Veronica here. Or here. Here. So we can smite her over. And then plop her here and try to go for this. Wait. No, 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 no. We don't want to do that because that's in range of tactics room. So we want to be here. Correct? No, we can't reach from there. So we want to be here so we can smite and then reach. Okay. Suppose Krom goes this way, then we can reach immediately. And from there we can get a ranged unit. To that. Okay, so I think if he goes this way, then we can just run. That's fine. So I like my options here, Kappa. Uh, so the problem is, how are we going to get everyone to everywhere we want them to get to? <laughs> I know that sounds silly. Uh, wait, so we put Veronica here. Okay, I've discovered a small flaw in my plan. <laughs> uh, let's do this. Into this into this yes. into this all right i think we have this uh we got soul up now and he goes there Orders, please. we can actually just straight up kill even but uh let's go for the smite play and it's the real one i mean not much of a surprise to me and from here, we can just go ahead and keep them trapped here. And we have all the time in the world, so we should be fine here. Can break this and pick up the kill of Krom. I mean, pick up the kill of Krom. Uh, pick the Krom kill up with a few arm. Since he's too slow here, we can just double, and that'll be a win. So, pretty straightforward. Uh, that's what happens when you don't have bolt tower coverage and full healing tower coverage, but... As you saw there, we already were able to go in turn 3 anyways, so even if we... Um, 
even if the healing tower were in full range, uh, well, I guess the problem then would be the Deirdre matchup. Cause I don't, were we one-shotting here? We might have been. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I don't remember, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I think it might have been, no, I don't think it was close. I don't remember though, unfortunately. But yeah, we would have, probably would have had a more difficult time if the healing tower were in range of all the units somehow in the same positions. But anyways, um, that, that might be that little AI shenanigan thing might be useful for folks uh, who aren't as familiar with the mechanics. But until next time, thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye.